Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about electrical power distribution on Iowa-class battleships, um, particularly our, our switchboard down here, which is the equivalent of the breaker box you guys might have in your house back home. So disclaimer here, I'm not an electrician. I'm a historian of ships. I'm going to point out some of this stuff. Um, maybe don't take it as electrical advice. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, I can point you to some great sources for that. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to show you some stuff on the ship that uh, you won't get to see on any of the tours. So above us is where the control panel is for the electricians. And then all the uh, switches for opening and closing these major circuits are down here. They're all locked shut with these uh, Navy locks. And they've got these big old danger high voltage tags on them. We're currently in engine room number three because this is the one where shore power comes into the ship and is then distributed throughout the rest of the vessel. When they set the ship up as a museum, they had to cut through the lock with some bolt cutters to open up uh, this particular switchboard. The other ones are all still locked shut and in fairly pristine condition. Uh, the, the door is graded, so we recently did an inspection of these, and um, this is the only one we were able to get into. So there are some threaded pieces here to hold the door shut. Remember, we're on a ship that's moving, pitching, and rolling, and you don't want some poor electrician to get thrown in there uh, because you can close the circuit with your body if you're not being careful. So let's take a brief look at what's in here and uh, then we'll move on to how the switches actually work. So in here you will see um, a couple of the bus bars. You'll notice they're labeled A, B, and C. If you watched our ground detection video linked in the description below, you'll see that uh, those are the three phases of 440 voltage power that's coming through here. Uh, obviously, we don't want 440 voltage going through our bodies. Um, these bars are just sheets of metal or pieces of metal that are conducting that electrical current. So you'll notice there is some wooden slats um, to form a last ditch defense against somebody sticking their hand in there and electrocuting themselves. If you served on, uh, say, any of the Coast Guard cutters or some of the World War II era tin cans, Back here would look like you were on uh, the set of Frankenstein with these big old lever switches. And when you throw them down, it closes and that switch is closing the electrical circuit. And when you pull them up, it opens the circuit, i.e. these switches are no longer connected. Uh, back here, you're just seeing the bus bars, which are part of the closed system. And I'm gonna show you the switch for opening them up here. So this is your switch for tying into bus bar number one in engine room number one. So if we want to cross connect what's going on in engine room number one to the power in here, because, well, because all the shore power is coming in here and we've got to send it to the other uh, switchboards around the ship, we want to close that circuit. To do that, we've got to take this handle right here and insert it into the hole and there's a little uh, hole in there that this peg inserts into. And notice it's removable, so this isn't just in the way. See how narrow this walkway is? Imagine some electrician trying to walk through here without tripping themselves and without like accidentally leaning on this and closing something they aren't trying to. So once this is in there, I can push it up to open it, i.e. cut that power, which would then kill power to about a quarter of the ship or I can drop it into this position to close it. Also got this dial right here, which allows me to lock or unlock this in the closed position. Famously, some unwitting electrician tried to lock a circuit open on South Dakota during the naval battle of Guadalcanal when she was fighting Karishima, and uh, that caused major electrical issues throughout the whole ship. So why the heck would you even want to do this? Well, one of the volunteer electricians who I work with here on the ship, uh, his destroyer was going to lose electrical power while they were going through the Panama Canal. 
somebody threw something on that they weren't supposed to, and uh, boom, the whole ship was was about to lose electrical power, which meant they would be a dead ship that would drift right into the canal, do untold millions of damage to the ship and to the canal. Uh, so he locked it open. So even though there was more power that was supposed to go through there and was going to cause some damage, kept power going to the steering gear so that the ship was able to navigate the canal safely. So there are situations like that in which you might want things locked open. Um, you can also manually trip it by pulling it closed and it'll shut off automatically. Have you ever electrocuted yourself? It's not the voltage that kills you, it's the amperage. This particular one is 450 volts, which might be enough to kill you, uh, but it's 4,000 amps, which is definitely enough to do you in for. Uh, I, I've gotten about 30 amps of shock from a 120 circuit before, but uh, I'm not going near this with a two foot pole. Anyway, if you've ever shocked yourself, let us know in the comment section down below. Make sure you always have a trained electrician doing your electrical work for you. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. If you'd like to continue to support us and the electrical work we've got going on around the ship, there's a link in the description below. We really appreciate your donations. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and what we do. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to spend an evening with me and other battleship enthusiasts and support the museum, Saturday, January 8th, we are hosting a meet and greet on board the ship. This starts at 4.30 and will probably run to about 9 p.m. Uh, during the talk, I'm going to answer questions from people like you. And also, we're going to uh, answer talk about my opinions on a couple of my favorite questions. Um, one of them, what would a modernized Iowa-class battleship look like in 2022? And another one, what would have happened if Battleship New Jersey was in the San Bernardino Strait? Those are just a couple of the questions. We'll have some other ones. And again, you guys can submit questions. This uh, talk probably will not end up on the YouTube channel. Uh, and if it does, it'll be months before it happens. So if you're in the area and you want to su uh, support the museum, I'd love it if you came out and met me. The winter is traditionally a very slow time for the museum. So coming out and participating in events like this really helps us get through to the next busy season. There's a link in the description below with more information if you're interested in attending.